We all know there's nothing quite like new bike day. The smell of fresh rubber and giving those brake handles a thousand test squeezes before it even leaves your living room. While the desire to throw it straight into the back of your truck and head to the hills to break in your new best friend is super strong, practicing restraint to do so is probably a good idea. There are a few things you can do to your bike before its first ride to keep it running nicer for longer, looking great, and maintaining a solid resale value if the time ever comes to part ways. So here's a list of 10 things you should do before the first ride on your beautiful new bike. Frame protection isn't just for the sake of vanity, but it keeps your new investment valuable too. The paint on your bike is never going to look this great again, so while it's brand new, covering it in some bike vinyl protection will keep those fine scratches from dulling that glossy sheen or marring your perfect matte finish. At a minimum, you should at least cover the down tube as it has the most exposure to damage. Tailgate pads tear the paint up massively. This here was after one trip, literally my first ride. And as you can see, I didn't take my own advice. So that's kind of what inspired this whole video. There are tons of aftermarket frame protection kits available, or you can do what I do and just buy some clear bulk vinyl and cut it to shape. It's cheaper and this 3M stuff holds up extremely well. After the down tube, the chain stays and seat stays get a fair amount of wear from debris and tire flex, especially if you're running a bigger size tire. Mastic tape is a great form of heavy duty protection for the base of the down tube or the chain stays if you're lacking a guard here. It's made of a firm rubber so it will quiet down chain slap noise and help deflect rocks a bit better rather than transferring a rock strike through your entire bike frame. If you use mastic tape, I would put this stuff on top of existing vinyl protection though because once it's on, it's on. Cleaning it off of a surface can get kind of messy. Also, Kydex is a good down tube protector as it's lightweight and you can mold it to your bike. It's a hard plastic which will prevent dents and damage to your frame. I made a video on this ages ago, so if you watch it, be warned, it's old. No, not in your hip pack, but in your bike's bearings. Now is actually one of the best times to grease all the moving parts on your bike. The grease that comes with most bike components, especially ones built on an assembly line, is mostly just adequate. Replacing the thin film of lube on your headset and crank arms with proper grease will help keep your bearings from rusting out prematurely. I would do these at a minimum. If you're feeling especially ambitious, and if you're careful not to damage the dust seals, you can open up your swing arm linkage and pack waterproof grease here too, which should keep your rear triangle operating smoothly for quite a bit longer than if you were to run them straight out of the box. But again, be super careful with removing the dust seals. I use an X-Acto knife to get under the edge to pry it up. If you cut these at all, it will let water in and toast your bearings pretty quick. Chances are the bolts on your bike have already been torqued down and some with a small amount of Loctite applied, but your bike has already been on a very long journey before it's even made it to your door. Traveling by freighter or on a plane means your bike may have been exposed to some wild temperature fluctuations and pressure changes, which can cause metals to expand and contract. Not to mention the delivery company that sent you your bike probably gave it a pretty wild ride while it was still in the box. Okay. No, the other way. Oh, good. All this jostling can work bolts loose, so instead of finding that out on the trail and losing hardware, it's a good idea to hit every bolt with a torque rinse just to make sure it'll stay in one piece on its first ride. This is also a routine maintenance piece you should be doing all year long. It sucks to roll up to the trailhead and find out a bolt is missing from your rear triangle. Depending on the bike, your chain may still have some of that grease that comes stock on it from the factory. This stuff, while it will keep your chain lubed, is nasty and tacky, attracting every bit of dirt that it comes into contact with, gumming up your drivetrain, leading to premature wear and noise. Wiping down the chain with a solvent to remove this stuff and replacing it with proper chain lube will keep your drivetrain clean and happy. Setting the sag on your bike properly is important because improper sag will lead to a bike that rides like a wet loaf of bread. So what's sag? Well, it's the amount your suspension settles under your body weight in a static position. 
too soft and you'll bottom and clonk over all the chunk, and too much pressure, you'll ping pong off of every bump on the trail. To find the correct seg amount for your suspension, you can either find the corresponding pressure to your weight on the suspension manufacturer's website, or like with Fox and Rock Shocks, they'll print those specs directly on the fork of your bike. After you set your initial seg, I recommend taking a shock pump with you on your first few rides until you get your suspension dialed. It's easier to make a lot of small tweaks trail side than to take notes and try and make one big change in between each outing. While this may not be entirely necessary, it's something that I like to do before I try out a bike for the first time. Having a saddle that agrees with your goods and grips that you know won't cramp your hands will go a long way in getting a feel for how your new bike truly rides with those variables removed. Something you should always do though, is throw on a good set of pedals. Pedals from the box are often to get you to ride home from the shop. Most times they're made out of cheap plastic with no pins for grip. If you've slipped a pedal before, you'll know it can be a scary moment, or worse, lead to a crash on your new shiny steed. This is a pretty important step for two reasons. The first one is getting an accurate start date with your bike's warranty. Most manufacturers offer some kind of warranty on the frame of the bike for the original owner. So registering your bike under your name will make for a no questions asked warranty fulfillment, usually. But there is another more crushing reason to register your bike, and that is theft. Having proof that your bike has been registered under your name at a prior date will help you get your bike back in the case someone steals it and it's found later. Unfortunately, nine times out of 10, when your bike is stolen, there's not much hope for it returning, but in the slim chance that it's found, you'll want all the proof you can to identify that it is in fact undisputably yours. With any new bike, this is usually an ongoing battle, especially with factory built wheel sets. Why? Because these are usually produced by the means of a machine and not a trained hand. While this is effective at assembling wheels and volume, they tend to lose true a lot faster than a proper hand-built wheel. Check spoke tension out of the box. If you don't have a spoke torque wrench like myself, a simple tap test will at least identify anything loose or just plain unscrewed. Not only should you do this before your first ride, but you'll want to keep a close eye on them, especially during the break-in period of your new bike. This is also a biggie to make part of your regular maintenance schedule. If you don't, your wheels will lose true and eventually make a better decoration than a bike wheel. If you haven't gone tubeless yet, you really should give it a try. Every time I've gone out for a ride with tubes, even with the higher tire pressures, my ride ends in a flat. And that's no way at all to end your first ride on your new bike. Going tubeless will allow you to run a slightly lower pressure for increased grip, which will be a nice feature to have as you learn the character of your new bike. This may come down to preference, but while converting to tubeless, I always add a tire insert for protecting your brand new rim. I can tell you from personal experience that denting a rim on your maiden voyage is an absolutely sickening feeling. Inserts can help keep those alloy rim dimples at bay. It can take some getting used to when jumping a brand new bike, so having some insert insurance can help keep your wheels unscathed during that period. If you've ever ridden on a set of brand new brakes, you know just how terribly they work. You'll need to take them through a process called bedding, which is basically just getting the pads and rotors hot enough to transfer an even layer of brake pad material onto the rotor. Doing this will give your brake set that smooth and strong stopping power that you need. A lot of people use their first trail ride to bed in their brakes, something that I'm guilty of, but just know they're not going to stop for you very well at all, so don't go full throttle right away. Your best bet is spending 15 minutes in a parking lot or the like, accelerating, then coming to a stop until you feel a noticeable improvement in brake feel. I know refraining from riding your brand new bike can be hard, but taking the time to do at least a few of these items will help keep your bike in great shape for seasons to come. If you want to check out any of the rad bikes in this video, click the affiliate link to Bikes Online below. 
using it helps support the channel a ton. And if you found this video helpful, hit like and subscribe to keep up to date here at The Shreddest. Thanks for watching today, and until next time, keep that rubber side down.